ago I didn't think that I would be making this video. I started this series on growing tomato from seed with sowing the seeds back in February and then pricking them out and at that point what I did was grow the plants on indoors using grow lights. I potted them on one time because it was still too cold to be planting them even out here in the greenhouse and then I started hardening them off about a month ago. I thought it's time to put them out, it's warming up. And I left them outdoors overnight while they were hardening off and the plants suffered for it. And I wasn't quite sure it was that, but what happened was that the leaves started turning brown, especially around the edges. And it really looked like it could have been a disease or overwatering or cold and I think in my case it was cold. What was really interesting about that is that I asked people on Instagram, I did a quiz through my Instagram stories asking what do you think is wrong with my tomatoes and nearly two-thirds of people said disease, burn it, throw it out, start from scratch. A third of you voted for what I thought it was, cold and fortunately you can see from my tomato plants they have recovered they're strong and green and the new leaves that they've formed, both on the stem and up top, they are completely free of disease. So I'm so glad that I gave them a chance to recover. So if your tomato plants suffer something similar early on in the season, it's very unlikely to be blight or another disease. It is most likely overwatering or they're, they're just too cold. If you put them outside when it's not warm enough, these subtropical plants will suffer for it. What we're gonna look at in this video is planting them out here in the greenhouse. In Britain, in most places in Britain at least, it is too cold to really grow them outdoors or the risk of blight, so late blight, is too risky to grow these guys outdoors. And blight is a fungal disease it settles on the leaves, it's brought in through the air, and it basically decimates the plant and the fruit. And growing them in the cover of a greenhouse helps to protect them, especially overnight when blight is spreading in and settling on the leaves of plants outdoors. So, got this all ready, and I'm also going to be planting tomatoes in a second way. So I've got a grow bag behind me. And we're going to look at the differences over the summer in growing them here in an organic solution here in the greenhouse. So this is uh, a combination of compost and manure. We'll get to that in a second. And then a more conventional way of growing tomatoes in grow bags. My tomato growing area is quite unique. And I'm going to go through quite a few things, but first of all, let's look at the varieties. This one is Costoludo Florentino. It's a beefsteak variety, as is this one over here. This is Black Russian. I'm growing these for the first time this year. I'm also growing Ailsa Craig, Red Pear, and Sun Gold. For the past few years, I've been growing my tomatoes in this wooden planter in the greenhouse and it's been filled with garden compost most of the time. But since moving to the new house and having to deal with New Zealand flatworm, I didn't want to bring in topsoil and I didn't have enough compost to fill it. So what I've done is fill it with composted horse manure, which I use a lot in the allotment garden. And what I'll be doing is planting the tomatoes in holes filled with compost and then they'll be able to feed off the compost and also the manure. You might be wondering what these pots are as well. And these are DIY Oyas. I have a video showing how you can make them. So these are the ones I started off with and this is the one that I filled with cement at the bottom. And then my other one is down here. And 
and a few years on the blue tack or the white tack is still holding up at the bottom of that one so the way that these work is that you fill them with water and water wicks through terracotta and so this will help to keep the plants watered especially on hot days or if I'm away over the weekend a lot of people had commented on that video why don't you just use a cork to fill the bottom now corks are too big for the other variety but I got this bigger pot and I found that a champagne or prosecco cork when it was expanded so after it had been sitting around for I don't know six months or so it got big enough to be able to fit the hole in this one so your pot holes might be different in size so there's several different methods on how to plug up the bottom around this wooden planter I've also constructed a support system and this is just made out of some simple rough timber that I've screwed together and put over the planter and I have some corks here as well so these are going to help stop the the wood from rubbing too much against the metal there and what this is for is for the tomatoes to grow up so all of the tomatoes that I'm growing are called indeterminate tomatoes. There's two different varieties. There's the bush varieties, which grow really bushy and they get to a certain height and then they stay that height. And these guys will actually keep growing taller and taller and taller and taller until you stop them basically. So they'll grow up to this area here and then I will continue to nip the bud, the growing point so that they don't get any taller than that. But this, wooden piece will give them something to grow up that and a bit of string and we'll come to that in a second i've dug a couple of holes for these tomato plants over here and they go all the way down to the bottom you can see the landscaping fabric that i've put down there and that's just to keep the compost in this planter and stop it from eroding out into the greenhouse. The hole that I've dug is much deeper than the level of the compost here in the pot. And ordinarily you would never do this with other plants, but in the case of tomatoes, if you plant them deeper, they'll actually start forming roots from the stem here. And that will give them a better support system and they'll have more roots to be able to make use of all the nutrients in the compost. So the hole is quite a bit deeper. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could plant all the way up to the first set of leaves up here. And the tomato plant will continue growing up, 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 and it will not suffer for it. In fact, it will be quite beneficial. I've been so looking forward to growing this variety, Costoluto Forentino, because the, the fruits are supposed to be just absolutely amazing. They could be made into sauces or put them on burgers. They are just a gorgeous, really good, flavorful beef tomato type. And I've got two of them that I'm putting into this planter here. They're big guys, and so they're gonna need the support of that, uh, that pole above. So getting started planting this, I've made a hole down here. So all the tomatoes now have holes, and I'm just gonna put the plant tag just at the back here. And I'm just going to take this guy out and put him in the hole, basically. Turn it upside down like that and pull the pot off. And look at that really gorgeous root system there. So we're going to turn this guy back upside or right side up and put it just down into the hole. Now, to be able to grow up to that support there, it's going to need something. And we're going to use some string. So what to do with this is I tie it around the base of the plant and then bring it up to that support and tie it in. And then as the plant grows, you wind the plant around the string and it grows straight up. It's just dead simple. You don't need any fancy contraptions, just string and something to support it from above. 
Now, with this string attached, all I need to do is backfill that hole with compost and give it a good water. And then I'm going to continue and do the exact same thing for all the plants here in this planter. The soil is pretty much saturated now and I've filled these oils up right up to the top. Now the way that these work, and I think there was some confusion in my video on how to make these, is that you need to use unglazed pots and what happens is that the water inside will wick through this material and into the soil and compost around. And it won't go very far really, about that far from the pot. But what happens is that these plants sense that water and start growing their roots towards the water source and they will actually latch onto the pot in the end and they will drink directly from it. So keeping these topped up is a good plan B for keeping your tomatoes hydrated. And this works both indoors and outdoors and you want to actually cover the tops with either the terracotta base that the pots come with or better yet use plastic. My last two greenhouse tomatoes are going to be planted in a typical grow bag and to be honest I'm not sure if they make organic grow bags. I've never seen them personally that doesn't mean that they don't exist but a lot of people do use these to grow their tomatoes and their aubergines, eggplants, peppers, and to be honest, you can grow a lot of other things in these as well. They're a mixture of peat and compost and basically nutrients that the plants need. And they actually don't even say on here where the sources of them are from, but they're no doubt a non-organic source Saying that, these are an easy way to start growing your own tomatoes, especially if you don't really understand what is necessarily needed as far as the compost and the nutrients, you basically plant them and go. There's instructions, which I've removed with this panel here, and basically is shake the bag up. They come brick hard, and so you wanna shake it up and that will redistribute the contents. You plant your plants inside, they can take up to three plants i'm just going to do two and you just keep it well watered and then it also has some instructions on feeding it with their brand of tomato feed as the as the season progresses i'm really curious to see how these plants do i'm sure they're going to do amazingly well but i think that um if you are thinking about growing in tomatoes and this is something that you can get a hold of and it's a little bit easier for you feel free to use a grow bag there's, as I said before, there's no shame in using this. I think there is quite a bit of shaming when it comes to gardening or anything in particular. Um, use what is accessible. The important thing is to grow something. And then as time goes on, if you want to graduate to something that's a more organic type, like my planter over here, then go for it. So let's get planting. The two tomatoes that I'm putting in here are the Sun Gold and also another Ailsa Craig. So there's an Ailsa Craig over there as well. And yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how this one does in comparison to its sister in the planter. So let's put the plant tag in there. Same procedure as before, although I won't be able to plant this as deep as I would do in the planter. I've seen other solutions on garden tours where you can put a plant pot inside, you just remove the bottom and then that gives it a little bit more depth. But I'm just gonna try growing it straight in the grow bag, just like the vast majority of people who use grow bags to grow their own tomatoes.
tomatoes are all planted here in the greenhouse. I have actually quite a few other tomatoes as spares. So I'm going to be trialing growing them outdoors this year. I've tried it before in the past, had terrible luck because of blight and cold weather. But if we get a summer like we did last year, I could have some luck. So I will be showing those in my normal home garden tours and I'll be giving updates on how this is progressing in those videos as well. The next dedicated tomato growing video will be when they're a little bit further on. And in the meantime, I'll be picking out any side shoots along the stem. And then the next video will be looking at pollination and feeding and we'll be seeing some of the fruits start to develop hopefully by that time as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. It came a little bit later than I hoped it would, but the tomatoes are now in the greenhouse and it's amazing how they've started off as little tiny seeds back a few months ago and now they're already big, strong, healthy plants and they're tough as well. They took that beating with the, the cold weather and they came out stronger for it perhaps. Thank you so much for watching the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to Lovely Greens already. Check out the other videos in the tomato growing playlist. And I will see you next time for a video back in the allotment garden. I'll see you then. Bye for now.